Welcome back guys. I need a radio controlled car. And it needs to run from AA batteries. Ones that run off AA batteries. That one does. Aha, drift car. Five batteries in the car, perfect. Hello. Hiya. Thank you. Right, got the little car, quite excited about that actually. Next up, I need some average quality rechargeable batteries. Keeping a high street going today. This ain't looking good, is it? Oh, hang on, what are these? 11 pound for four. Why does it need five? Let the fun begin. Right guys, so why are we messing around with cheap radio controlled cars today? Because I've been sent something quite interesting. So a company called Xstar has sent me this. Looks like a normal battery charger, but let's open it up. So what we've got here guys are lithium iron AA batteries. Yes, these are AA batteries. They look and feel, apart from being a lot lighter than a normal alkaline AA battery, they are lithium iron AA batteries. Cool, aren't they? They are lighter. They're definitely a lot lighter. So, I mean, lithium iron cells are 3.7 volts or 3.6 volts nominal. So there must be some sort of step down in here. You know, so I'm imagining there's probably like a small little pouch cell in here and then it kind of steps down to, to 1.5 volts. That's gonna give you more power. And that's why I've got something like this, because this is gonna take quite a lot of power. So what we're gonna do first, apart from turn this place into a racetrack, is we're gonna try these generic Energizer, you know, off the shelf, standard rechargeable batteries that you'd, just, you'd pick up, you know, if you wanted some rechargeable batteries. Uh, we're gonna try these in the car first, see how it goes and then we're gonna move over to these batteries. So I'm gonna to have to run this car flat twice. It's a hard life, isn't it? <laughs> right, so I've cleared a bit of an area. I don't know how much space I'm gonna need for this thing, but we'll just have to make it out as we go along, see what it's like. So cool. What's this? You even get some spare tires as well. I need a screwdriver to get it out. Three. That's so cool. Um, I think those spare tires are non-drift ones because obviously it's got the sort of slicky sort of ones on there to slide around. Controller's pretty terrible. The throttle looks like it's just on or off. Let's get some batteries in. Yeah, so five we need for that, two for that. So first up with the energizers, these come pre-charged. So I only need five of these obviously for the, for the car. Um, I'm gonna stick two in there obviously, and I'll probably actually just leave those in there because there's no point you know, using high power batteries in, in the remote. It's not really gonna make any difference. What I might do actually is put these in and then run it up and see if there's any difference between like the motor RPM. You should hear it sort of go me. I'm, I'm thinking the other ones are gonna obviously provide more power because they are actually the higher voltage. It's quite a bit of difference that. Well, I bet there's some of you that just wanna see this thing go. Right, let's do it. I've got a stopwatch running.
How warm is that? Yeah, it's pretty warm. Still going, I'm getting bored now. We're at 48 minutes. Oh, we finally, I mean, it's still going, but look, look how slu sluggish it's going. It won't even drift now. All of a sudden, they're just dropped. I bet they're blimmin' up. Yeah, they are absolutely, absolutely roasting. I've got asbestos fingers, but these, yeah, that you wouldn't want that any hotter than that. Right, we'll call that a day at 50 minutes. Right, test two then. I've got a feeling this might smoke. <laughs> Something's not right. What's that all about? It's like pulsing. Look, check this out. Look, if, it, if you actually let it run, it, it kind of has like a turbo boost. It's weird. Look, so it sort of starts off slow, then all of a sudden it just lets rip. And it does the same on the way back as well. Something's interfering with the radio on it. Because look, if you stand back and do it, you get that little jolt. And it's really not responsive. And if you actually go close to it with the radio and then do it, it's absolutely fine. So I'm wondering if there's something inside these batteries that's just interfering with this radio. Now, if we do the steering, if we go closer, not doing it. I don't know. Right guys, it's the next day now and I've been looking into this problem more. Are you ready for some science? Right, so I've got eight of these X-Style batteries in this little battery holder and this is giving me 12 volts out and I'm gonna power a radio off of it. This radio is set to the same band as the radio controlled car. Watch what happens when I turn this bank on. Look at all this. So let's turn it off. This is basically showing you interference. So the interference is coming from these batteries. Um, and actually, funnily enough, the more I kind of ground myself to it, the more interference it creates. So if our communications link between the car and the radio is actually on one of these frequencies and you're getting this, it's just causing a shed load of interference. So that is the reason why it's not working. So I'm gonna test out charging the energizers up. They were completely flat. Normally, you know, these rechargeable batteries, they take ages to, to recharge, don't they? Um, it's just the bane of my life normally. But this charger is actually really interesting because it actually handles USB-C, proper USB-C power delivery. So look, we can see on this little power bank here, we've got nine volts going out and half an amp. So that should make quite a bit of difference to getting these topped up quick. It's also pretty nice because it's got this kind of like cut out here so you can just pop the batteries out nice and easy, um, which does make a difference. And also that obviously helps airflow through there as well. All right guys, not content with giving up on this test. I've tried something else. I've actually taken the top of this off and under here um, there was an antenna kind of coiled up. So I thought maybe if I kind of extend it out, it might um, improve things, but it hasn't. So I've shoved the energizers back in and they were pretty quick. It's pretty quick to charge on this. Um, using the USB-C. So the charger aspect is, is brilliant. Um, these batteries, obviously, you know, they might work in some things, they might not. Um, pretty good idea, but we'll, we'll have to see what, um, you know, what developments happen with these. But yeah, for now, I'm loving messing around with this. Such a blast that little car for 25 quid as well. It's amazing. It's actually making me think about getting into flipping. Um, I do not need another hobby, by the way. Um, if you follow this channel, you know how many different things that I'm actually into. But yeah, like the proper drift car, like the um, Kyosho Mini Z I've been looking at that. I'm, I'm sure you guys are gonna throw loads of comments at me um, saying, I'll oh, get this car, do this. It's probably gonna end up happening. Anyway, so yeah, I'm super impressed with the charger. Um, the batteries have their use, I think, in different things. I've tried them in GPS, like a GPS unit, work really well. You know, things like that, I think they're gonna work fantastically in. And for the car stuff, funnily enough, on XStar's Indiegogo page for this product, because it's, it's basically like a, a sort of Indiegogo campaign they're doing uh, for this charger, which I'll leave the link below, because they've got some good kind of, you know, early bird deals going on. Um, there's actually a video of the Kyosho Mini Z um, a guy's sort of doing some tests with it and saying that obviously power to weight ratio of these batteries is actually really, really good because they're a lot lighter than, 
you know, the equivalent nickel metal hydride, and also nickel metal hydrides are a bit lower voltage. So he was testing the AAA, the triple A batteries, um, in one of these videos, and yeah, got really good, really good results. So I think it depends what you're putting these batteries in. You know, we discussed that radio is probably a no-no because obviously, you know, the interference. When I first saw these batteries, when um, X-Star reached out to me, I thought, oh, they'd be great in like a kind of, you know, like a CB radio or something, just because they, the old school radios take like eight batteries and, you know, they're always running out and you don't get the right voltage and maybe just a little bit more voltage would actually, you know, push some more power out on some of these older, older radios. Anyway, it turns out that obviously we're getting interference and maybe that's not going to work. You know, there's more playing around to be done there. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Go check out X-Star's products as well. They're all on Amazon and everywhere else. I'll leave some links to the, to the things that I've got. I'm really impressed with the brand. So yeah, catch you later.